and you can edit this formula. Okay, so let's think we want every group to be on their own page. Now the way we do that, the way we force page breaks and other weird stuff in general, is we're going to go to our section expert, which is actually a right click here, and then go down to format section. And what the section expert allows us to do is, is control the behavior of all of the separate sections in the document. So when we think about our group, our group appears, or our, yeah, our, our group is comprised of a header and a footer, printed both once per group, uh, uh, respectively. So when we think about what we want to do, we want every group to be on its own page. And you notice here that for every section, I can force a new page before or a new page after. Uh, so when we think about, okay, so be before every group, force a new page before it, right? Okay, I hit okay. I hit preview. Huh, got a blank page there. Oh, okay, now it starts working. There's blank, and here's Acme. How come my first page is blank? This is actually a mistake I used to make all the time. I want to go back into my section expert. Because we're specifying a new page before the first group header is even printed. Which is incidentally a nice way to get a blank page. But actually what we're looking for is to print a new page after our group footer. New page after. And that's typically how you want it. Because now blank appears on the first page. So on and so forth. Uh, another uh, very common thing to see here is, uh, is to force a new page before the report footer. Uh, and the reason for that is the report footer is typically where you, where you see a lot of like charts and graphs uh, and summaries and things of that nature. Uh, for those of you who really know your crystal formulas, you can actually conditionally control these items by clicking on the little X2 guys here. That opens up a formula editor, so each one of these items here can be controlled with a crystal function. To be honest, I don't play around a lot with that, um, uh, barring special circumstances, but it is possible. Okay, let's talk about massive selection criteria. Uh, when we think about your typical crystal report, it, it's never looking at like everyone, right? We're always looking at uh, Bob's records, or records where Bob's had history, or records added in the last 90 days, or records with a sale in the last 90 days, or however you want to do it. What I'm going to show you is, is a nice technique, hopefully you'll think it's a nice technique, to, to kind of clarify and simplify your select expert. So let's just eyeball, actually I'm going to remove this group. The way we remove a group is we can actually uh, right click here within our section identifier and say delete group here. I'm pretty sure we can do it from our group expert too. Mm, guess not, we gotta do it from here. Right click, oops, right click, delete group. So when we think about this report, let me move my fields over so we um, can look at the headings. Okay, so a typical report request would be I want a report of anyone who is in the rocket science industry who might also be a lab assistant. I only want the people added within the last two years. And I only want the ones in New York State. And then I only want the ones where this key three, that's actually a an estimated dollars field, we'll call that. So, so the, the idea being that sales reps have been entering in a value here of, of the, the work they've estimated to the prospect. And, and, and not only do I want those particular people, I only want those particular people who were estimated between uh, one and $400. So there's a lot going on here. Now as crystal reporters, we know that, that that's all very, very possible. We have a saying in the industry, um, there's no such word as no because it can all happen. So let's jump right into our select expert. And let's start building our criteria. So what did the boss want? Well, the first thing he wants is the state should be equal to, to New York. And uh, again, whenever you're working with a select expert, do yourself a favor. 
go right to show formula go right to the formula editor this is really where you want to be so okay so I only want records in New York State and my key to remember my my rocket science field should be and I'm going to show you a neat trick when I when I'm when I'm testing for a list of items well what you could do here let me remove this let me back up a minute we could say I want my key to field to be either rocket science or I want it to be lab assistant that's one way to do it a cleaner way to do it is to say my field is in the following list and the way you the way you create a little list here is you use an opening square bracket and then you put in your list limited by commas Oop. does the same thing so it, it'll grab either of these values so my key two should be one of these and my state should be New York and again whenever you're you're um, building complex formulas multi-condition formulas do yourself a favor even though I, I almost drove this all the way home I'm not gonna I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna back out I'm gonna test it especially when you're working with selection criteria you want to back all the way out you want to just test it you want to preview your records you want to make sure you're getting anything at all and okay I am so what we're looking at here are the rocket science and lab assistants in New York and let me just change that dollar amount for Wiley bear with me okay so not only do we want those people but we only want these out of these people who are left we only want the people who've been created say uh, in the year 2010 which will give us Wiley which is what we're after all right, so we're going to append to our select expert right to the formula editor. That's where you want to be. And oh, hold on, hold on. And the year of my create on date. And what the, the year function in Crystal, what that does is that returns the four-digit year. So, and the year they were created should equal 2010. I'm not sure if I need to encapsulate that or not. No, I don't. Because it's a number, I don't need to say this, right? When you're working with numbers, they're not, they're not enclosed in quotes. All right, so now we should only have one record left. All right. Okay, so, so here's the idea. Um, the boss keeps asking you to, to change your criteria. I only want to see these people. I only want to see these people. Um, a nice, and, and then what we want to do is we also want to say, and our key three has to be within that dollar amount range, right? That, that was the final thing. So let's work on that. So out of these people who are left, I only want people who are estimated between uh, one and $400. Uh, okay, so I want to evaluate that number, so I'm going to go back into my select expert. And my key three should be greater than or equal to zero. And key three should be less than or equal. I'm sorry, that was 100, right? And then, and then it should also be less than or equal to 400, right? Let me check that. Ooh, a string is required here. That's because my, my naughty end users have been tracking this dollar amount in a text field. No big deal, because we're crystal reporters. We know that we can always use our handy dandy two number function, which converts any string to a number if it has numbers in it. I use this all the time check again no errors found okay but but 
what what we want to do is we want to control the flow of the expression what we because we're evaluating contact three twice here we want to encapsulate that as its own set of instructions with parentheses so both of these things have to be true right otherwise it would work unexpectedly and that should actually just return the the one record but what I want to show you is that, that now we have this honking huge selection criteria. A better way or an alternative way to do this is to write a couple of formulas. So let's, let's take, for instance, our, our dollar amount right here. So we're going to cut this out. I'm going to save that. I'm going to create a formula to handle that for me. We're going to call this dollar amount. <clears throat> and I'm going to say if my dollar amount falls into that range, then it's true. Otherwise, it's false. Now, when you start using the if then else, and Crystal, I'm, I'm trying to rush. I apologize just because we're running out of time. If, when you start to use the if then else and Crystal, you can actually kick out a true or a false, which then makes the formula a Boolean uh, formula. So again, what this now we we've taken our our dollar amount logic off of the select expert, and we've encoded it into this formula called uh, dollar amount. So all we have to do now is go back to our select expert and say, okay, I want all this stuff to be true, and I want my dollar amount to be true. So what we've done is we've taken the dollar amount uh, testing code and we've encapsulated that into this really easy to use formula. Now what? Now you might be saying to yourself, well yeah, I mean it wasn't that hard uh, using the dollar amounts uh, in a select expert, but think about this. If you ever need to use a different dollar amount, all you need to do at this point is just change the way your formula is evaluating it. And then you're going to run in, into non-numeric strings if your end users have not been keeping their data in numerical fields. But I hope you get the idea that, that what, what you can actually do is you can peel off layers of your selection criteria. Get out of there and put them into their own formula. So let's grab the key two test out of here. I'm going to save that. I can create a new formula. I'm going to call this industry. And all I have to do is say, if you find either one of those, then say true. Otherwise, say false. Oop. And now we can go back to our select expert. And say my industry should be true. So now what we have here is, is a much easier to work with select expert. And now now once you start start paring down the complexity of your select expert. Uh, you could start to do some truly, truly amazing things. Because remember, because the select expert's just looking for these formulas to kick out a true, it's reliant upon those formulas. So uh, if we want to change anything about the way that the select expert is working, all we have to do is change the underlying formulas. I hope that made sense. At any rate, we are out of time. So I'd like to thank you all for taking this time out of your afternoons. Uh, I'm always looking for the next batch of crystal tips or tricks. Please feel free to reach out to me at justin at marksgroup.net. Again, you can uh, go visit our YouTube channel and look at the other Crystal Reports videos that I've put up. And always go to blog.marksgroup.net to see past tips from years ago. Uh, again, my name is Justin Hill. Thanks and have a great day.